Good morning, everybody. Uh, as I'm sure most of you know, uh, tumor, the Tumor Virology Laboratory's main interest is on human papillomaviruses uh, and their mechanisms by which they induce uh, human carcinogenesis. This group of viruses uh, are very important human carcinogens. Uh, they account for around between 5 and 10% of all human cancers. Of these, cervical cancer is by far the most important, and they cause 99%, or actually over 99% of these cancers. They're also responsible for a, a, a significant number of other anogenital tumors, and a rapidly increasing proportion of head and neck cancers. The, uh, the, there's Almost 200 different papillomavirus types have been described, uh, but only a small subset of these are actually defined as cancer-causing. Uh, the two most important are HPV-16 and HPV-18, uh, but it's important to remember that there's also uh, this other subset of types that are also defined as cancer-causing in these different anatomical sites. Now, the distribution of cervical cancer is global, um, but it's a particularly devastating problem within developing countries. This just shows you the global distribution of the disease uh, overlaid on the map of the ICGB member states. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's a particularly devastating problem within Southeast Asia, but also uh, within many parts of Africa uh, and also in South America. And, and it's, it's important to remember that in many of these countries, uh, cervical cancer is the major cause of cancer-related death uh, in women. Now, the, the virus itself has a very unusual life cycle. Uh, it is absolutely linked to this differentiation process that occurs uh, within the infected epithelium. Um, the virus is believed to uh, infect these cells, this basal cell compartment, through microtraumas in the skin. And then as these cells begin a process of differentiation, you see coordinate expression of the different viral gene products, which ultimately give rise to new uh, infectious virus particles. Now, the main feature about this virus, uh, and, and one of the reasons why it, it's such a powerful carcinogen, is that it normally replicates its DNA uh, within this mid-epithelial layer of the differentiating epithelium. Now, these cells have normally exited the cell cycle and are in a process of terminal differentiation. But we have these two viral oncoproteins, E6 and E7, that within these cells push those cells back into a kind of cell, into a, a kind of pseudo S phase and create an environment which is favorable for higher rates of both viral and cellular DNA replication. So long-term presence of these two viral oncoproteins is, is, is a really dangerous situation uh, for, the, uh, for the continued homeostasis, uh, normal homeostasis of these infected cells. And in fact, we know that papillomavirus is, is, is quite unusual in that we can see long-term persistent infections with a lack of immune clearance, and these can go for two to four years. And, and this is the single biggest risk factor for ultimate development of cervical cancer. During the progression to malignancy, the other striking characteristic feature is this very high and continued expression of these two viral oncoproteins, E6 <coughs> and E7. And we know from work done in the laboratory here and in many other labs throughout the world that if we can block the function uh, of either of these two viral oncoproteins, then we can very effectively uh, block the development of the tumor, the progression of the tumor, and we can also interfere with the normal viral life cycle. So that's the lab's, one of the lab's major interests, is to understand how these two proteins function, and with that information, can we develop strategies to intervene uh, in the development of these tumors. Um, I guess, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure most of you are aware that there's actually very good vaccines currently available against papillomavirus. So we always have to, to, to address the question of why do we think therapies are still important? Well, the vaccines that are currently out there, while very effective, um, if we could access everybody who should be vaccinated, it would still take 10 to 20 years to impact upon the disease. Uh, we have major uh, issues in terms of accessibility with respect to logistics and cost uh, within 
most of the countries where this vaccine is really needed. Um, and it's also important to remember that the vaccine is a prophylactic, it's not a therapeutic. So of the millions of women that are already infected with papillomavirus, uh, th these will still uh, go on to develop the disease. And in fact, WHO projections uh, uh, indicate that this is going to increase dramatically uh, over the next 10 years or so. And again, many of these cases will be within ICGB member countries. Uh, and finally, it's also important to remember uh, that these vaccines only uh, really cover two of the different papillomavirus types, HPV 16 and 18, and there are many other types that are also cancer-causing. So one of the strategies that we've taken to try and get at the function of the E6 oncoprotein and see if we can develop strategies to block its function has been to do basic structural analyses of the interaction between the HPV E6 oncoprotein, which is shown here, uh, this, this is the carboxy terminus of this protein, in complex with uh, three different cellular substrates that we know are important for its biological activity. And through these analyses, we've been able to accurately define uh, the molecular basis for target recognition by the HPV E6 oncoprotein. And then from this analysis, in collaboration with Amit Sharma uh, at ICGB in New Delhi, they performed in silico screening to try and identify proteins that might be predict that will be predicted to try and block the interaction between E6 and its target proteins. These screens have now been completed. We've done the initial uh, in vitro screening to, to test these compounds to see if they block the association with these cellular targets. And we're now at the stage of testing these compounds uh, in in vivo systems to see if they can actually block the proliferation of HPV infected cells. Obviously, this approach has potential to generate reagents that would be very useful as research tools, but it also has obviously potential therapeutic applications. And this just shows you uh, one of the ba initial basic screens where we can see we've identified compounds which potently inhibit the association between E6 and this cellular target protein. The other work that we're interested in, and the, the, the other side of the, uh, the problem, is, is when we have the initial viral infection, is there anything we can do to try and block this or to interfere with this normal uh, HPV life cycle. And one of the projects that we have ongoing in the laboratory at the moment has been focused on the HPV L2 protein. Now L2 is a protein that is a component of the viral capsid. So this is the, the structure that encapsidates the viral DNA. And we know from work from a number of laboratories that L2 is a critical player uh, within the infection process. We used a proteomic analysis to look for interacting cellular proteins, and what we identified was a protein called sortinexin 17, um, which is involved in endosomal transport pathways. And we know from a variety of studies that the capacity of L2 to interact with this protein is essential for normal viral infection process. The way we do in these studies uh, is to use a pseudovirion technology. And what this consists of is we have a plasmid which express the two viral capsid proteins, L1 and L2. And we also have a reporter plasmid which encodes in this case for luciferase. These are co-transfected uh, into a cell line such as 293s. And because of the very high levels of expression of these two viral proteins, they actually have the remarkable characteristic of, of self-assembly into so-called pseudovirions. And these pseudovirions also package this reporter plasmid. Uh, we can purify these uh, virions and then use them for experiments to look at either any, uh, compounds that can inhibit viral infection or, or proteins that are critical for the viral infection process. And this is just to show you some of that data. So if we do these infections and we knock down this cellular protein sorting next in 17, you see you have a dramatic inhibition of the capacity of these viruses to infect the target cell. And one of the striking features uh, about this interaction is that it seems 
common to many different papillomavirus types. Obviously, our interest is in those primarily that cause cancer, such as HPV-16 and HPV-18, but we know that benign uh, genital infection uh, papillomaviruses, such as HPV-11, and also papillomaviruses that just cause regular hand warps, HPV-2, they all require this particular cellular protein for uh, efficient uh, viral infection. And indeed, uh, this is conserved even as far away as uh, papillomaviruses derived from, uh, from, from, from animal systems. Uh, so, so this association of the L2 with this cellular target is a key evolutionary conserved step within uh, the capacity of these viruses to infect a cell. Uh, I'd just like to acknowledge the members of the laboratory. This is uh, those who have been present over the last year, uh, who have been involved in various aspects of the work. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we have uh, a, a very broad distribution uh, of, of, of lab members from all over, uh, from all over the world. And of course, uh, we're indebted to a fantastic collaboration that we have with Amit Sharma at ICGB uh, in New Delhi, and also uh, an ongoing collaboration with Iqbal Park uh, in Cape Town uh, on, on some of the uh, studies with the uh, pseudovirians uh, and obviously, of course, our uh, external funding support. Thank you very much.